Hey, welcome to a new shiny month. I opened up today's broadcast giving you two of my favorite questions to ask of myself and my business before I wrap up a month so I'm clear going into a new month. Today was a Q&A episode, so I took about seven questions that were submitted. We talked about how to tune in to your intuition, how to mother with clear eyes and a clear heart, and how to really change people. How do we do that? <laughs> Enjoy. Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. This is a show just for you, somebody interested in taking ownership of your health, leading your life, and living your legacy. And I'm so pumped you're here because I am another you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing this out with your friends and with your teams. Let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome. Welcome to the last day of February. That is pretty fun in and of itself, right? I'm excited for March to start. There's a lot of good stuff coming up in March and February, well, backtracking, we've talked about this already. January felt super long, right? February is a short month, but yet it feels like winter just like is coming on so strong and it feels like it goes on forever, even though it's a shorter month. So March is almost here. That's the good news. And I wanted to actually uh, kick off. You, you'll see my screen over on Facebook. I'm going to share the questions that came in today for today's show. Um, but I wanted to take you through a quick question exercise on the last day of the month, especially for those of you that own a business. There are some questions that you're going to want to ask of your month. And what you're going to see over my Facebook page right now, if you're streaming in there, Instagram, I'll just say the questions for you. Yeah, Melissa, February, the longest, shortest month. That's right. Uh, the last day of the month, the last week of a month really is an invitation for us to have clarity on where things are going in our business and to check in with ourselves and, and just be honest with how things are tracking we all have goals. And I mean, especially if you own a business of any kind, you tend to go by more of a calendar with how you're planning your goals for your business, right? So you set, you likely set some sort of an overview annual goal. From there, you focus on quarters, when you're going to do those things, what makes the most sense seasonally in your business. And then you break it down even further to monthly goals. What's the right month to focus on this thing or those couple of things? And that is what shapes your action. And so in the last week of the month, it's really smart just to be honest with ourselves and ask two of my favorite questions I'm gonna share right now. Uh, and in the Beautiful Life Lab, a lot of you are in there. One of the sheets that you work on quite consistently is your uh, review of your last week because that's telling a story every week if you're really checking in on how things are moving in certain areas. And those areas are, are the goals that you've defined for your business and for your life. If you check in with those things before a brand new month starts, you can pivot. You can, you can be real with yourself and, and understand what you're going to be needing going forward. And so here's my two questions I wanted to open up today with and invite you to ask of your February before it closes out. So number one, what went really well this month that you want a blueprint going forward? I want you to think about your month and I want you to think about some of your best days that you had this month. Maybe you had a goal to um, move your body in some way every single day. I want you to tap into how that felt to accomplish that this past month. What were some of those great days where you felt strong in your body, where you felt like you were showing up in the way that you wanted to show up? Maybe your goal was business focused. Maybe your goal was to hit a certain level in your business, okay? Ask yourself what day this month went really well in your business? What was a day where you were just knocking it out, doing the things you said you were going to do and you had a clear focus for your day and you did those things? That's a great day. That's what, you wanna have more of those great days. So I want you to think about what went into that day. Deconstruct it and think what, what can I do more of in March to have more of those great days, whatever that looked like for you. So really tune in on this last day of the month because it's so easy, you guys. You wake up tomorrow, it's March 1st, and boom, you're off to something new and there's new folks. If you're in doTERRA, for example, building a business, you're gonna wake up tomorrow morning, there's gonna be a brand new set of exciting things you could share with people. And if you don't tune in and ask yourself some of these questions of your current month, February, then you're gonna roll into March and it's like sleeping into a new month, right? You're just not gonna go into it with really sharp, clear eyes. So 
ask yourself that first question, what went really well that you want to blueprint in your March? And then the second question I have for you is what did not go well that you need to optimize? When I say optimize, that can take on different forms. So in the Beautiful Life Lab, I talk about optimization in the forms of asking, does this need to be delegated? Is this something now that you can, you have perfected in such a way, um, or maybe not, maybe it's something that you, you have not perfected and you just know you need to delegate it. You know, there's different ways to approach delegation. For a lot of people, they're more confident handing that over to somebody else if they have taken the time to truly understand it so that they know how to explain what they're wanting when they delegate that out, okay? So does that thing that is, did not go well last month, is that something to now delegate out? The second way is to ask, is it something that can be automated? Automation, we have a lot of things at our fingertips today that we can utilize in order to run things more efficiently. But if we don't have good systems in place, then those things run us. The phone is a great example of that. If we don't have systems around how to make it work for us, you're going to be working for your phone. It's going to be running a lot of your time, right? So having systems that automate, especially in those areas where you find yourself getting stuck in the weeds, where you're, you're spending way too much time focusing on that thing. So uh, I'll give you a quick example. Maybe doing more videos is something that you want to do, but you keep getting stuck in trying to have the perfect looking video and you're trying to edit it and have everything just so before you do the thing. And if your goal is to do more video to connect with your community, like we're doing right now, then what if in March you let go and released that need for it all to go perfectly and you just hop on with your phone and you use a simple app to edit it. Like you can look in the app store, just take a look through the different apps and get, get familiar with an editing program. You don't need to understand how to work ScreenFlow or Camtasia or iMovie or GarageBand or all these things anymore. There's so many ways you can make that process easier on yourself, okay? So think about what was heavy, what took a lot of your time this month and how can you optimize that? Maybe automating it's one thing. The last form of optimization is to let it go. What is it that you've been doing that's keeping you stuck that you need to stop doing forevermore? If you don't take the time to really look at your month through this lens, you're going to keep repeating it and it, you never quite get into that state of flow. So anyway, I wanted to offer that up to you as we kicked off today. And I do have some really great questions that you guys submitted, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, but I wanted to let you know, somebody asked on here if I'm going to leadership. Yes, I am. I'm going to both leaderships this year. So leadership is doTERRA's retreat for higher level leaders. Uh, it happens once a year. They do an East Coast and a West Coast. And um, it's phenomenal training. Phenomenal. Like just to be able to be in a room with such a group of powerhouse leaders and through osmosis, you being in that room, there's so much that shifts for you. You won't realize it at the time. And of course, the real work begins whenever you come home from an event. But it's what lights a fire in the work that you're doing, okay? Um, so I hope to see you there. Yeah, let me know if you're on live and which one you're going to. And uh, let's try to say a quick hello when we're there together. But I, I will be going to both. Uh, yeah, San Diego, awesome. Okay, so... I'm just reading some of the comments here. Tara said IT tech issues with her blog is something she's focused on that felt heavy to her. Decluttering people and things, leaving my true priorities always front and center. Yeah, that's that's ongoing work, right? And it shifts as you shift, as you as you step into um, your growth, your personal growth, you will notice that things that felt okay, people that felt okay, uh, commitments, relationships, goals that you had set for yourself, those will change. Those will change as you continue to grow. And so it's important to tune into that. All right, so let's get into some questions. If you are over on the Facebook page, I'm going to show them actually on the screen here. So these are questions that were submitted. Let me just minimize my screen over here so you can actually see them. There we go. It might be a little bit hard to read, but you can see them up on the screen uh, as I go along. These are questions that were submitted to wholefit.com forward slash pod question. However, for those of you that are on live, I will do five to 10 minutes at the end today of discussion with your questions. I mentioned on Instagram today that I, I want to get away from calling this Q&A because 
I don't have the answers for you, right? Nobody does, but you do. You, you have the answers for you. But I think through conversations on platforms like this, when we can have Q&A style sessions, uh, the goal, at least my goal anyway, is to always have a conversation around what, what the root of that is and to help shift perspective. Because oftentimes when we're asking a question, we're seeing something as this problem, right? Something we're looking to solve and it feels outside of us. So I think if we have questions and, and, and can talk about it and have different perspectives weigh in, then we find the answer that we've had the whole time right in here, okay? So Jen was the first question. Jen said, you talk a lot about receiving downloads and in those downloads help guide you to what you wanna create. I'm curious how you learned to receive these downloads. I'm feeling called to listen to my own intuition more and rely less on others. And I would love to learn ways to tune in myself. I've created space in my life for alone time, for journaling, reading, listening to podcasts and books, and I drive a lot for work. So sometimes I use that time to just let my mind wander and then pull over and write everything down. So I'd love to know how you learned to tune into yourself. Any tips or suggestions would be great. So comment if this is something that you think about in your own life where you're, you're, you're sometimes thinking, you know, I have all these great ideas, but I don't know what to take action on. Or maybe you feel like, I don't receive ideas. I don't even know what to do first. And, and you find that you're often looking to someone else for the answers, or you're looking to someone else to show you the way something should be done. Even if you're not commenting, I know this is something that many of us experience in our life, and I have too. And when I reflect back on first beginning as a business owner, that's when I think is the most sensitive time frame when it comes to developing this strong sense of self, because it's so easy when you start something to be looking all around you at how people are doing that thing, especially you guys, if you're in a business where there are other people doing what you do. So if you're in doTERRA, for example, building a business, hello, you have, you know, there are 7 million customers in doTERRA. I'm not sure the head count of how many people are actually sharing um, the oils, but let's say this. So we have that leadership retreat coming up. It's going to draw somewhere around 4,000 leaders at, East Coast and West Coast. So even right there, I mean, those are just the attendees. Even right there, let's call it 10,000 silver ranked leaders. So that first high level leadership rank. So here you are sharing doTERRA and there are 10,000 at least other people doing the same thing. And that's a, that's a real common thing when people start a doTERRA business is how do I actually do this my way? The best advice I can give you, Jen has already covered Point one, the first thing you want to do is you want to make time for those ideas to visit you, for, for you to understand how you are meant to bring that idea forward. And the truth is, every single one of you has a very unique way of doing that thing that 10,000 other people are doing. There is a very unique way you're meant to do it. It has to do with a formula of your experiences, what lights you up, your gifts, your pain, the way, the perspective that you have is what shapes the way that you do it. And so you, you do need to do what Jen's already doing, where you, you take time to create the, the opportunity for those ideas to visit you. One of the greatest ways to sabotage that is to be looking left and right all the time, looking at how everyone else is doing that thing because that starts to cloud you. It can be inspirational at times. Sometimes you'll see somebody doing something a certain way. This has happened for me. Um, especially, I, I love to look for inspiration outside of my specific work. So sometimes I'll draw inspiration from the way somebody else is teaching a completely different topic than what I'm doing. And it's actually the, the method behind how they're doing it that I, I draw inspiration from and then I figure out my way to do it, right? But that is step one. You have to create space for that. So it's really important that you protect your ability to listen and realize when that idea is hitting you, okay? When you see things a certain way or you receive that download or that insight that this is an idea you're meant to run with. Um, if you're constantly looking around you, then you're only ever seeing everyone. You gotta protect that. But the second thing, okay? And actually the most important thing, when you're starting a business or when you're feeling in this state, when you're feeling a bit vulnerable to um, not knowing the way, the most important thing you, you could ever do 
is to take action and learn to trust your action, not based on what happens next, but trusting the fact that you are showing up right now and doing the thing and learning through that. Building that trust with yourself, you guys, over time is what's going to put you in a position to receive more and more clarity on what you're meant to do next. It doesn't usually come first. And I, I think that's a really important thing to understand. You, you build that trust and being a business owner, you guys can be really scary. It can feel, you can feel alone in what you're doing. Uh, it's much easier to go to work for someone else because at the end of the day, you know, you can say, well, that's their thing. I'm just showing up to work right? That's their vision. That's their goal. I don't agree with it, but I'm, it's how I'm getting paid, right? Whereas when you own your own business, you're putting yourself out there. You're on the line. You're the one saying you're going to do something and it's up to you to figure out what that looks like. But that trust with yourself is like, you, you never, you can never really skip that part. I mean, is anybody here willing to just share times when you felt like, you were doing all the things and nothing was really moving in the right direction until you learned to trust yourself and trust your ideas. And then all of a sudden things start to feel lighter. You start to feel like, wow, this is what people talk about when they talk about flow and things just moving in the right direction. And you'll, you'll do that. And then you'll find yourself in a new season, in a new level, in a new rank. And all of a sudden you feel like you're back at, you know, Step one again, because new level, right? There's a new level being called out of you. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Kate. And you have to be a student again of it, right? So it doesn't ever totally go away. But over time, you're building trust with yourself over and over and over again, showing up and doing things that you have an idea about. And the fact that you just show up and do them. It might not right away show you that it was the right idea or the right way, but it will feel the most you as you're doing it. And that's, that really is the most important thing. So that is how I see this question. Yes, you are all receiving downloads all the time, uh, but to make sure it's a download that's meant for you, you need to put yourself in a position to, to be open to that, create space, create time for, driving while, while it's quiet, you know, uh, and be careful about what you're letting in. It's really important. Okay. Question two comes from Enza. She said, Hey, Ange, thank you for the love and light you spread in the world. I'm wondering if there's a strengths finder you can recommend. Absolutely. Jill, I think you're on Facebook. If you could grab the link for, um, the Clifton strengths. So, this is cool. Uh, doTERRA, if you're building doTERRA, I'm not sure if you know this, but they have recorded videos for all 30 strengths that you could learn about yourself in StrengthsFinder. So when you do an assessment, and the, what I recommend is StrengthsFinder. It's a great, there's a lot of other ones out there, um, but this is a really robust library of, of understanding not only what your strengths are, but what that looks like to put it into action. And if you're in doTERRA, they've recorded uh, videos that actually show you what that strength would look like in action, which is really cool because for a lot of you, um, that's the key. It's like, well, what, how does this pertain to me? What does this mean that I have this strength of competition <laughs> or whatever it is? So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very freeing to understand yourself in a business sense in this way, because it makes you realize why you do things the way you do them and why sometimes things feel really expansive in your business and why other times they feel like a struggle uh, because often you're you're approaching a thing you're doing something not leading with your strength okay so that's my favorite tool to recommend um, especially if you're a business owner okay Alana said hey I Angela, love your work I'm trying so hard to create a morning ritual and routine but it's hard with my two little girls they're one and three and the second I try to get up and get an hour of time to do things in the morning alone, they will wake up and straight away I'm working with another morning's, another person's morning agenda. Do you have any advice? Um, yeah, you know, I remember when our, my girls were that age and it's, it's tough. It, you're right. And I, I often joke with Chris that that seems to keep happening. Uh, even in our house, our girls are seven and nine and it's like Murphy's law, right? Like you wake up, they wake up. Um, but 
I do think that you can look at where you can just push it a little bit more. I don't have some sage, you know, recommendation here other than get up earlier. They will, they will eventually drop set to their, their more normal time of waking up. Uh, so like this morning we were up about quarter to six and sure enough, Chloe walks down the stairs at 6.15. And it was just one of those mornings because she actually went to bed a little earlier last night and I was like, you know, and I had my things I wanted to, to do. And I think that that time in the morning is so important. It is so sacred. I am only now, you guys, in this past six to nine months, um, I've really been working on myself to shift that to go to bed by 10. That, that, that's unusual for me. I used to be a night owl and get super creative at night. Um, but, but now I've been, I've been working on it for a while to have the 5 a.m. start and it's been a game changer for me. Um, I used to always, I knew that was always the right thing um, for me to try on. It was just really tough to work towards that. And so I have really realized the power of that early morning. And so Lana, it's tough at that age, but I would just keep pushing your wake up time because they will find that, that time that's much too early for them to wake up, um, consistently anyway. Okay. Fourth question was from Leanne. Where do you find people to talk to if you work out of your home? She's a reflexology therapist and She's already had oil conversations with her clients. So I think that if we understand the point of social media is connection, right? It's not just to sell what you're doing. It's, it's really to form those connections over time and build and, and to create meaningful relationships with people. And so I think that if you have an in-person business, that's one thing, right? You have your in-person business, you're meeting people all the time. Now, word of mouth, that's big. I, you know, so Leanne's building doTERRA. She, is a reflexologist she has customers coming in so i would be focusing on that word of mouth if, if you're trying to grow your essential oil business now leanne hasn't specified that but if that was the goal then she would want to be setting up opportunities for her clients to host essential oil classes you know and you work through that word of mouth model locally um, but online, you guys, if you understand the nature of social media is, is truly to make those connections over time long game this is not the, the people that are, have already come on social media and are off social media in, in many ways are the ones who would follow just for the follow. They're the ones who would buy followers. They're the ones who um, they would spam comments on everyone's posts. There wasn't that real true connection. They're gone. If they're not gone, they're going to be gone in a couple of months because the real point of connecting here is to find people that you connect with and if you sell something it's finding people that are truly looking for what you have so that you can build that connection with them over time and we're all in sales in some way bottom line like if you're not actually selling something yourself you're sending people to someone else um, all the time through through how you're living through what you're buying through what you're recommending through sharing what works for you and what's with my hair Whew, got beach hair going on uh, so that, that really is what you want to understand about meeting new people. It takes time, just like anything. It's going to take a lot longer online, but locally I would, I would get up to some new hobbies this year. I would find, if you're wanting to genuinely get out there and meet new people, then think about things that have interested you that you've been putting on the back burner for a while and figure out where you're going to meet people who are into that as well. So maybe there's some sort of an event or get together or, you know, weekly knitting club or book club or, or something, you know, maybe it's going to attend a tech conference, social media conference. If you're wanting to truly get yourself out there and learn more about it, figure out what interests you beyond what you're doing right now with your hands and what your actual business is, because it will always come back to impact your business, right? So you want to just explore that this year. And if you are, so Leanne's building in doTERRA, I take it. This is a relationship business. That's bottom line, you know, this is a people business. Otherwise, doTERRA would have just sold their incredible oils on the shelves of Whole Foods and it wouldn't have gone further than that. This, this is really about connection and sharing stories with each other and uplifting each other and creating a space where people can feel connected. That's the work of what we do. So yes, you do need to figure out ways to get out of your local mind more people that have similar passions to you. Alexandra says, first, thank you for your beautiful life lab. Two questions, how to create 
that chamber or deep workspace when you work from home or in a small studio space with your partner. Tips on creating that container in such intimate space rather than working from the kitchen table. And then her second question is how to build doTERRA in a rural area, any tips for reaching out and building online? So I actually just addressed that question, the second part around tips to reach out. Most important thing, shift your lens. This is gonna take time, years, years, okay? So as you're, as you're meeting people online, don't just give up if, if you reach out to somebody and it goes nowhere, or you, you join a group and you're, you're making connections and you wish your social media following was growing faster than it was. It's going to take years, but that is the point, right? This is the, this is the long game. So, so just it, it start now. For those of you that have been holding back, sharing online, you know, what, when, when are you going to do it? When are you going to start giving the world what you've got and finding people who need what you have? When are you going to start doing it? I mean, the, the whole, what, what's really interesting is if your heart is there to help people and connect with people and, and truly to do that, truly to help people with, with things you've learned along the way, right? If that's where your heart is, you will not fail at this. You will not go wrong because that's what people are seeking Everybody has something they can teach another person if, they're, if their goal is really to, to grow and to um, live their best life, right? Like we're, we're, all, we're all doing that in some way. So you have something to offer other people and then you just have to start doing it and, and be consistent with it. But the first part of that question, how to create that area of focus when you don't have it at home. So... What Alexander's referring to in, in the lab, in the Beautiful Life lab, I talk about the importance of having a zone where you do your best work. We all have areas of our home where we tend to sit around on our phone or our laptop and do work, right? But when, you, when there are things that you know you need to give real good focus to, or maybe it's, it's having a space where you go to, just like we talked about at the beginning of the show, to actually receive those downloads, you do want to have a designated area so that when you go in that space, you know what you're doing, your vision knows what you're doing there, right? You're, you're there to get to work. That's not where you go to just browse Instagram. That's where you go to get her done. So if you have a small studio space like this, your, your container or the chamber that you go to work in, it doesn't have to be a chamber per se, where it's like doors are closed and there's no windows and there's like no light coming in. That's a jail. You, you can create a space of transition. So that's what I want you to think about. This might be your car. I don't know if you have a car, Alexandra, but if you do, that can be a wonderful chamber to work in. What would happen if instead of working at the kitchen table where you're getting interrupted, right? We know our, our husbands, partners, wives, we know they have the best intentions when we're working from home and they want to talk. And, but the reality is they don't know what we're trying to do. You have to set boundaries around your focus so that, so that you're not interrupted. You have to own that. And that will often lead to a day full of regret if you have all these things, and maybe it's not all these things, maybe it's three things that you said you wanted to do in your business today and you just don't get to it because there's constant distractions happening because you work from home, let's say. Go in your car. Go in the back seat of your car. Move your front seats forward. I have done this many times. I especially did this when the kids were little babes. I used to drive around so they would have their nap and I would bring my laptop. I know a lot of you do this. And I knew I could get in 37 minutes of really good crush it time. And I was prepared so that when those eyes shut in the back seat, I've got my little Starbucks up front. I'm sitting in the parking lot and I open that computer and I get it done. I know what I said I was going to do. Um, cafes can be great for this as well. I would have, I would, I would structure if I was you, if I was living in a small space and fighting for focus time, I would structure my week so that on Mondays, I went to this cafe. On Tuesdays, I went to the library. On Wednesdays, I went to this park with a nice bench. I would change it up so that the minute I moved into that new space, it called action out of me. Because that, that is actually, like I do it all the time. I have different areas of my home, which I do different work at for that reason, right? I have a little, 
nook where I have a, just a table and a chair where I'll do more just loose thinking or browsing or whatever. I have my office, which is very secluded, private, right? Um, I have, I work at the kitchen table sometimes too. Like, you know, if I'm just looking at my calendar for the day and not having to do that high level thinking. So it can really help to have those space, that space designated, but also to have some sort of a structure to your week, especially if you don't have five days a week to work on your business, that can be another issue that comes up. So really think of, okay, what are the actual days I'm working and where am I doing that work? And that can really go a long way. Uh, just to, and, and going into that time with a clear plan is key. Not too overwhelming, not a hundred things on a page, two or three things. Alicia said, I would love to hear an episode about how you have created a beautiful life for your kids. <laughs> I love how I giggle because I don't know if that's possible totally, but I do my best. <laughs> I love how you talk about creating a peaceful, loving home with oils and health. It sounds like you have even added a tutor and switched schools this year. I'd love to hear about how you planned and decided those things. That is right. Uh, so, you know, this, is, here's what it is. Okay, here's what I want you to think about. Moms, when we are taking care of ourselves, when we are full, okay, when we are, when we are doing good things for ourselves as mothers, we are able to see things more clearly. Can't emphasize that enough. It starts with us. If we are depleted, we are always going to feel as mothers that we're trying to catch up, that we can't even see what the first thing is we should do sometimes to, to make more changes in our home. So it starts with us first. We wanna take good care of ourselves so our lens is clear so that we can see things and feel things on that level. One thing that goes a long way here, and this is, this is what one of the areas that I often teach with essential oils, one of the key reasons people start is because they want to reduce the amount of noise coming into their body. They want to reduce the tipping point. You know, and green cleaners go such a long way here, such a long way. When you get rid of a lot of the harmful chemicals in your home, all of a sudden things start to free up a little bit. You start to realize, and I mean, this is not woo, you guys. This is you are clogged. You cannot see and feel things um, when your state is clogged, when you have a lot of things coming at you. You'll only understand what I'm saying if you've tried it. You, you may not realize it, but there's a lot of competing things for your attention when you, when you have a clogged body. So when you are making efforts in your home to clean up various areas, you just start to, to see things differently. You start to think, well, maybe, you know, maybe I can do something different with, with the schooling and, and what we're doing there because you, you can really tune in and feel what's happening with your child as opposed to just always reacting when things emotionally are happening, right? When you're full, you see things differently. And that, that is honestly the best way I know how to guide this question because it's not just about one thing. It's really about us as mothers being able to see what we need to do next clearly because we're not burnt out and reacting to things all the time. So like you, I just do my best. Uh, but I'm also very aware that there is no one way. One of the things I, I think about all the time is that we are raised thinking life is one way. We are raised thinking that school looks a certain way, that um, religion looks a certain way, that health looks a certain way, that, that because of the way we're raised. We're, and we have to challenge that and understand, does that work for us anymore? Is that still what's true? And that, you know, I'm getting a little bit out there with this response, but I hope you're sticking with me for a second on this because when we start to question, oh, I wonder how this could be better. So we look at our, within our own home, we take more ownership of that. When we look at the way we're doing things in our home and, and maybe we're starting to do things that are different than how we were raised, that can, be res that can be a form of resistance in the beginning. There's friction there, right? Because you're, let's say you grew up with all the chemical medications and you grew up with all the perfume and all the things and all of a sudden you start 
doing things different because you're following your heart. You think, you know, I don't think this is good anymore. And you develop awareness. You develop, you're clear. You're clear as a mama. You, you, mm, you are the mama bear of that home, right? Like you, you need to be clear and you need to follow your intuition when it guides you and do not, you know, ask questions, ask questions, you know? So the kids schooling, they go to a Waldorf school now. Somebody just asked me that on Instagram. Game changer. Mm, I just, I mean, I do regret not doing it sooner, but that I, I don't regret it for the same reasons because it allowed me to see the contrast. When, when they started, and I can't explain it, I'm not, so I'm not gonna make this all about Waldorf, uh, but my heart, I just, I knew that was the right direction. And within days, the kids came home and it literally, what, the best way I could describe it is the school is an extension of how we are at home. So I'm not having to do all this unpacking of emotions and unraveling. And I, the experience they're having in that school is love and it's, and, and their confidence is growing. And I mean, it doesn't have to be a Waldorf school. I'm just saying that is one thing that sometimes we don't challenge enough. You know, if we're doing all of this work in our own homes as mothers with our kids and you know that's a natural place to look at what how what is the extension of of the work in the home and and are there things that are unraveling that work and that and schooling was one example of that uh so i don't know i mean i think i think we have to just again become in uh aware when things seem off when we're being guided in a certain direction it's for a reason don't ignore it follow it and the clearer that we are as mothers the clearer our eyes are the the more the more we take care of ourselves the easier it is to interpret when we need to pivot i cannot stop talking about this enough it's actually i'm speaking at leadership at both east and west and this is the heart of my talk is leadership starts with us being a mother everything we do in the home everything i mean let's be real i'm not and i'm not nothing against um fathers at all because this doesn't have to take a gender form but we we really we are where it begins love begins with us and if you're if you're a a dad listening in right now and single parenting, same thing goes. Love begins with you. Peace begins with you. Health begins with you. And it all works out from there. Yes, Cass. Cass says, plus we model for our children how to take care of self. And I, boy, I think this is really missing today. We're, we're looking outside of ourselves for the answers. We're, we're looking outside of ourselves for the leaders. We're, we're confused as mothers, as parents. We don't know what the right way is to go. And if we return back to filling ourselves up and being clear and doing our best through that lens, we will always know the right next move. I believe that with everything, you guys, everything, everything I've learned up till now has taught me that. You take care of you, you lead yourself, you see things differently, and you learn to trust. Mm can't I mean it's just this is this is truth okay I'll come back to your questions in just a moment uh, there was one last one that was submitted and I'll see what live questions we have Tara said hey girl you honestly have no idea how you've enlightened my life <laughs> here's my question how to conversate with those who claim they're allergic to oils even doTERRA or that oils set off some kind of reaction for them but you really want to help them because they have a myriad of health issues and concerns without being pushy. Um, she goes on to say, you know, how, what's the best way to approach this? So the one thing I want to just hop on to here. So Tara says this person, for example, has all of these health issues and they're claiming they're reacting to essential oils. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. It's not up to you. Not to you. So this is this is a really common concern we have, especially with our family, right? 
we always like can see all the things that our husband or our wife or our family needs to change. It's just the way we are, but that's not your work. Your work is you. And so all you can do, all you can do is, is share so that people have access to that information, but it's not up to you to change them. Now, if somebody has a whole ton of health issues and they're, they've tried a doTERRA oil. So let's separate that out. Essential oils from the gas station, from Winners, from Michaels, the craft store, the health store even. We're not talking about essential oils in that case. Often in those cases, you're talking about perfumes, bottom line. Even if it says it's 100% pure lavender, perfume most of the time. So let's separate this out. If somebody uses doTERRA and they have a reaction of some kind, the oils are the most potent and the purest plant essential oils you could ever have access to. So for some people, I mean, you need to quanti qualify what that reaction is. Did they apply a hot oil on their skin? And, or, you know, you mentioned that it set off some sort of a migraine. Sometimes, I mean, it can, it can get very complex when somebody's dealing with a lot of health issues, like Tara said. Uh, most often in a really clogged body, when you start to awaken it, when it's when a clogged body, so a body that has been pumped full of pharmaceuticals for years, um, d harmful chemicals and products, hormone disruptors, uh, when, it, when it's coming at them from all angles because they haven't tuned in or haven't been made aware, it can, it can stir up a reaction. Because essential oils metabolize very quickly in the body, which is the good thing, but it can absolutely stir that up. I mean, even if somebody was to start taking a high quality multivitamin and drink good water, even, strip it back, even if somebody stopped drinking pop for a week and just drank water, they're going to have migraines come on big. Um, the body can get very used to dealing with things that are clogging it. That's why if you've ever, let's say you grew up using perfume and all of a sudden you stop using it, it's why you might walk into um, a department store that's spraying it all over the clothes and all of a sudden after years and years and years all of a sudden you have a headache and you can't breathe because your body became adapted so uh cleansing you guys purposeful periodic cleansing is very helpful for the body to help it shift into a new way so like right now i'm running the cleanse and restore kit for our oil community we do it twice a year it's a really important cleanse um, because it invites you to look at a lot of areas of your life that you want to make some shifts in. But what it's really doing is it's helping to recalibrate the body towards health rather than towards disease. Your body does not want to move in that direction, but when it's receiving a lot of things it has to deal with in the form, even emotional, emotional stress, right? But physical stress, environmental stress, stress from the products and the ingredients we're using, when we, when we aren't cleaning up enough of those areas, obviously our body's going to do some talking when we start to make some shifts in the beginning, but you have to go, you have to work through it to the other side. So number one here, don't try to ever change somebody else. All you can do is model what happens when you take ownership of yourself. That is all you can do. doesn't matter what you're talking about. You guys, you will have people coming at you and trust me, the healthier you get and the more confident you are, as a leader and the more impact you're having on people's lives the more intense that criticism is going to come when people are dedicated to their disease they cannot stand your health they cannot stand to see somebody else taking ownership of their health all you can do is rock your life oh, that's it so don't try to change people and if somebody says they're having a reaction to a pure plant oil, if they want, if you want to work with them, if they want to work with you to figure out what's going on and explore that deeper, perfect. That's the goal. But if they're not, they're not. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Eventually, eventually at some, I mean, at some point you have to think the lights come on. And somebody wants to be more willing to look at the things that they're doing in their body, the way that they're seeing the world, if they're not quite that. So 
all you can do is do you keep doing what you're doing and and again this keeps coming back when you take a level of ownership with your own life and health it can't help but get people talking and you know the right people that are ready they're going to come your way and those are the people you're meant to help right now not the people who are saying plants give me headaches while they're drinking their diet coke whatever i mean you can't that's not that's not where your work needs to be yes live life by example so if you guys have questions just put a put them in caps so i can see them bless and release robin love you <laughs> tara tara's on oh good tara who asked the question dedicated to their disease light bulb right yes i mean we're dedicated to what we do consistently so if somebody is is really truly dedicated to health they'll want to figure out what's going on why they're why they've got these health issues going on but if they're not if they're dedicated to staying stuck where they are you are not for them they're going to seek out the people that are going to enable them to stay there okay put your questions in caps if you have any i'll stay on if you have a question you can tell where my mind has been for the last couple of weeks just been as uh you know just working on this talk i'm giving next week and and just really embodying that that message and, and taking that in for myself and, and always looking at what does that mean if if we are to take more self-ownership and lead ourselves in a higher level what does that look like and what happens next when we do that Michelle says, I'm pushing for the last day today to qualify for leadership. How do we make sure we aren't getting into a desperate state and attracting people we normally wouldn't want to attract? Often, if you're forcing something, that can happen. So what I would say, Michelle, is as soon as you hop off, maybe you hop off right now, I want you to go and just get quiet and tune in to your heart and ask who needs you right now and what in what form does that look like what can you hop on and share right now who can you connect back with that that you're thinking about and i i mean i opened up talking about the power of the last week of the month and and really it's a week and especially the last day it's a, it's an opportunity to not leave anything on the table so don't compromise who you are in order to achieve something go even deeper on who you are to achieve something so how i don't know what time is it where you are do you have another seven hours to to really crush it and show up in a big bright way even if you don't make that goal today michelle all of the work you do on a day like today or in this month it will always come back it will always come back so uh, i'm not sure how close you are but i would I would not leave anything on the table. Ingrid said, when you're not living with the dad and you share the kid 50-50 and he's not living naturally, how do you handle that? I've never been in that situation. Uh, but what I would say again, and again, I, I don't mean to keep repeating this, but all you can own is you and, and how you show up. And so... <laughs> You have wisdom to add? Uh, <laughs> so Chris wants to hop on and answer that one, but uh, I don't think he's prepared to uh, by the looks of him. <laughs> All you can do is your best with, with what time you have. Um, that, that can be tough. And the, the good thing, the good thing that will come of this is as your kids grow, they will learn the difference in how they feel. It's no different really than having these conversations with our kids when they go over to a friend's house or they go to school and they see kids eating lunches that have lots of different things that maybe you wouldn't ever give them in your lunch. It's an opportunity to have those conversations, right? You're not trying to perfect a situation ever. You're just doing your best. And I think that the earlier you can have those kinds of conversations with your kids and just ask them what they think. It doesn't, I mean, don't ever approach anything like it's only your way, right? Ask them how they feel when they eat unhealthy foods. 
um, and, and put, help them to grow up to be in more of a position of, <clears throat> of making, of having discernment, of, of being able to make choices that are good for them, not just because mom and dad say so. So this could be a great opportunity for you to have more of those conversations with your kids and, and share why you do things a certain way and respect why your ex does things a certain way and ask them to decide for themselves what, what feels like the best way. Okay, I saw one more question on here. I see a lot of you commenting, but I'm just looking for capital letters. <laughs> That's where my eyes are going right now. Mm, okay, there's a good last question. How do you overcome shame when your own health issues make it seem that you aren't a good model of a healthy lifestyle, even when you're doing everything you can to be healthy? So I think what you're referring to here is what, what about when you don't feel like you look the part? when you don't physically embody what you're, what you're teaching, right? I think that we all feel this way at, at some point in our life, whether it's, you know, physically, the, the health not visibly looking like it's there, or maybe intellectually not feeling like we're really prepared to speak to what we're, we're going to speak about. I mean, this takes on a lot of different forms, but I really appreciate this question because uh, it can be so tempting to, to judge somebody based on how they look versus what they're talking about, right? It's, it's just human nature at times to do that. I mean, that, that old saying, never trust a skinny chef. Uh, that's what you know comes to mind when I think of this is that we often look at somebody and think certain things um, whether we want to admit it or not and so that can create a feeling of imposter syndrome for us if we feel like we don't look the part and here's the here's here's what I think of when I when I think of this have you ever met somebody who's attractive like maybe they're like they look like a supermodel in picture and then you meet them and it's like it's dim like there's there's that that experience of beauty that you had in a picture doesn't translate actually an even better and a better example of this is social media how often has it happened that you you like love somebody and you you follow them and um you look up to them and then you meet them in person and you're like what? That's what they look like, or that's how they act, or that's how it feels talking with them. And it just totally changes your perception. The very same thing is at work here. So even if you feel, and I, I don't want to ask you to be more specific here, um, you're saying that your own health issues. So maybe you're on a journey with something right now, and you're dealing with, let's say you have like full blown eczema, and you're trying to talk to somebody about the importance of watching ingredients in your products, okay? The two things, most important, always be honest about where you're at in your journey. This is not about being at a certain point and having it all figured out. This is not about perfection, right? This, what really draws people in is they wanna know you, they wanna know what, what you're working through and if it could help them, great. You can, impact people through your journey, even if you're not at the end of that journey yet. Even more powerfully probably than meeting you at the end of your journey, because they might not believe you. So if you can just be honest and, and open up and say, hey, you know, I'm dealing with this right now and here's what I'm doing. And some days it's hard because I'm not, I don't always feel like it's moving in the right direction, but then I'll have a day where I just feel like I'm in control and everything's and I know I'm, I'm heading in the right path. And you share that with people and it diffuses that judgment because at the end of the day, if somebody is judging you based on that, they're judging themselves a lot harder, right? So you have to know that there, you diffuse that if you open up and just can connect heart to heart and say, yeah, I'm dealing with this right now and here's what I'm doing about it. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really feeling a lot of hope about it because X, Y, Z. But the second thing I wanted to share and really the most important thing is how people feel in your presence. 
the way you do things, the, the energy that you bring to a conversation, to a class, to a presentation, to whatever it is you're doing where you, you need to show up and you're trying to edify yourself in what you're doing, just open up and be you. Just let go of that feeling that you need to have it just so perfected and that you need to look a certain way in order for people. People want to feel you. And so the next time you're, you're doubting yourself, I want you to think, you know, what would be, how can I connect to their hearts? What is the best way to, to help us all feel safer? What, what role do you play in other people not feeling shame too? When you're feeling that, maybe, it, maybe it's a call to, to be the one who, who helps other people feel safer when that's coming up for them. And just keep working, keep, stay in your lane, keep working on yourself and what you're doing. And that's what ultimately attracts people to what you're doing. It's not giving up. It's not, you know, don't, don't quit on, on your journey and what you're, what you're seeking for yourself, but bring people on a journey with you as you're doing that. I, I really do think that that's the part that we're missing at times is that this isn't, yeah, th this is not about you needing to be at the end mark of the finish line before you can ever start helping another person because there's so much that you're learning along the way. There's so much, there's so much value there, you know, and there's so much you're doing that can bless and impact another person. Don't discount that. So I think, I, I know you're on a journey and I, I, I do believe that people who are, are going through or have gone through really difficult things, they see things a different way and, and they're able to add really true value to other people's lives because they've, they've been going through something. So I think you're actually in a really powerful position to, to help other people with, with the work that you do. Yeah, let's finish there, Robin. Robin Fawcett over on Facebook reminded us of that quote by Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Really good. Okay, I'll see you guys next month and I'll see you even earlier if you are going to Leadership Retreat. Come up and say hello, I'd love to meet you. And we'll wrap that there. I'll get this uploaded as a podcast later this week. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you liked the content, please consider popping over to iTunes and leaving a review so that more people can find this show. If you have a question or a topic suggestion for future shows, head over to wholefit.com forward slash pod question. You can also find all past episodes and show notes at wholefit.com forward slash podcast. See you next time.